You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. Before we get started, just a reminder that you can find all of my available rental properties on my website at markguzman.com. If you own investment property, click on the owner services section to see our complete list of services. Hello, podcast listeners. So I want to start off by apologizing for the audio quality because I'm here up in Sacramento for the California Association of Realtors Spring Meeting Conference. Uh, where we get together. It's about 2,500 realtors that are together and going to our uh, legislative branches uh, to basically uh, lobby and fight for homeownership rights. So I am here and it's really tough to get some clear audio on a lapel mic because there's a lot of things going on. So again, I apologize for the audio quality. But um, wanted to make this quick uh, podcast for today to replace highest and best that's normally done on Wednesdays. And I want to talk about some of the different laws that are coming into place here. Uh, number one, we have uh, Assembly Bill 2618. This is a very interesting bill that's making its way through the California uh, state government right now. Uh, we're not sure how this is going to pan out, but um, we... So basically, let me break this down for you. So what this uh, bill would do is it would require all real estate licensees that want to do property management to, in addition to being licensed, obviously, they have to get certified for property management. So there would be additional classes and courses they would have to take uh, in order to manage other people's properties. Now, this bill also takes it a step further and requires that every property owner, if you're going to rent out even your own property, you would be required to take a certification course. Uh, you know, this is completely unnecessary. I think uh, there's some argument for me being in property management business now uh, for about a decade and being a realtor for 15 years. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that do property management that should not do property management. Um, personally, I probably wouldn't be so opposed to additional uh, educational requirements, but the problem is it's already available. It's already out there. We don't need anything in addition. But the biggest effect here would be for property owners. Property owners themselves would be subject to getting certified in order to manage their own property. Now, this just doesn't sound right. Um, again, if if the whole goal is for more education, there's already education available out there that anyone can take. Uh, I know if you go to the uh, California Association of Realtors website, you can get education there. Uh, the California Apartment Association and the Apartment Owners Association, all three have very, very good educational programs that I highly recommend. So this is uh, going to be very interesting to watch. Um, obviously, uh, another thing on the November ballot that's going to be uh, a lot a lot discussed here in Sacramento will be the Casa Hawkins Repeal Act. So the Casa Hawkins uh, Act currently protects single family residences and condos from rent control in rent control jurisdictions. Additionally, it allows for vacancy decontrol. So if, for example, your tenant leaves an apartment unit, then you're able to relist the property at market rents. Well, If Casa Hawkins gets repealed, this becomes a very big problem for every property owner because many cities that have rent control can then immediately pass an ordinance or an amendment to their ordinance to include single family homes, condos and townhomes under rent control. Additionally, they would be able to pass an ordinance that, for example, uh, if you're renting out a rent control unit for $1,000 a month, and it's worth 2000 on the open market, and the tenant leaves, today you would be able to raise it up to the $2,000. However, if Casa Hawkins gets repealed and a city jurisdiction with rent control decides to amend their ordinance to eliminate vacancy decontrol, 
And then what could potentially happen is when your tenant at a thousand a month leaves, then you have to rent out the property again for a thousand dollars a month. So that is not good. What's going to end up happening is a lot of landlords will not do repairs. They won't do upgrades. They won't do what's necessary to bring the property up into a much better condition in order to get the higher rents because there's no incentive anymore. So once you take out that incentive for a, a reasonable return on investment, all of a sudden you're going to start having a lot of blight and condition issues in every property. Uh, the really big thing that uh, is going to be pushed here in Sacramento also is the portability initiative. Now, this initiative, I've done a couple podcasts in the past uh, covering this topic and basically uh, why this is important um, in order to pass is that uh, currently through Prop 60 and Prop 90, when you sell your property, you can take your tax basis to another property as long as you're buying down in purchase price and you're also buying within the same county. Now, out of the 52 or 58 counties in California, only 11 participate uh, in allowing people from other counties to sell and move their tax bases to their county. Well, this initiative would actually require every county in California to participate and would allow you, the property owner, to buy up or buy down in terms of purchase price compared to your sales price and tax basis. Now, this is really important because this is going to help a lot of senior citizens in being able to relocate, especially closer to family or to sell their property, take the equity and buy something that they would be able to downsize or have a family and it would just overall be better. Uh, it's estimated that about 45,000 transactions will occur because of this specific, um, because of this specific uh, initiative. So that's something to uh, really look for. Um, and then the final, final uh, bill that we want to talk about is regarding accessory dwelling units. Uh, one of the things I've talked about on the podcast before is that uh, we're, we're all fully aware of the housing crisis. There's not enough housing in California. Right now, in order to keep up with demand, there has to be 180,000 residential units built every single year. And currently, we're only building about 80,000 every single year. So that's just you know, we can't even keep up with the population growth here in California, then mix in with the people that are already here and coming over the last few years. And you've got a really bad housing crisis, which explains why home prices and rental prices have been going up a lot. So there was a law group that did a study where if 25% of every single family house was able to add on an accessory dwelling unit, also known as an ADU. Most people also refer it to as an in-law unit. But if you're able to, if 25% of all single family homes added an accessory dwelling unit, we would solve the housing crisis. Now, one problem with this is that you would, once you solve the housing crisis, the big elephant in the room is that housing prices would drop. So you would, your property value would be less. But people would have housing and people would have affordable housing. So those are the hot topics being discussed here in Sacramento. And uh, I'll provide an update at uh, the next episode of Highest and Best covering this specific conference and uh, excited to bring you guys a lot more education. So again, apologize for the audio, uh, but this is some good info that I wanted to uh, bring out to you guys. I really, really want to thank all of you for listening. It means the world to me and I hope today's episode provides you value in your day-to-day -day life. I created this podcast to help showcase the many great people that live in this world and help share some knowledge that I've learned along the way in life. Again, thank you for listening. Check out our sponsors and I'll catch you on the next episode.